just because a guy you have given a guy your body it doesn't mean he's committed to you hi guys it's me ray from raytalks.co.uk and welcome back to my channel it has been a while since i've made a youtube video but i'm back guys happy new year happy new decade i hope the new decade i hope the new year is going great for you i'm saying happy new year and the way i am i might even upload this in summer but hopefully by god's grace that won't be the case i'm going to be detangling my hair and discussing the topic with you so if you don't know by god's grace i am a christian i say by god's grace because it's only by god's grace that i am still here that i'm still here that i'm still on this faith journey um and i was talking to god and I just really feel like I want to do more for him. I'm not the type to do, to be on the street handing out literature and I really commend those people that do that, especially when they're preaching truth because we know there's a lot of error out there. So even having said that, please, if you desire to get to know, want to know Jesus more, knowing for yourself, pray to God, ask God for the Holy Spirit and read the Bible for yourself and let the Bible be its own expositor expositor I forgot what their word is um yeah so i'm gonna be discussing a topic typically one around faith whilst i detangle my hair and i hope that you are blessed and please chime in in the comments down below give me a thumbs up make sure you subscribe and check out my blog and if you do like this series please let me know so i will continue doing it so let's get started so I've come back from work and this series has been on my mind for ages and now I'm doing it. New year, new me and that, lol. So I'm going to be using my trusty detangling brush. If you want to get one of these, check out. So this is my hair. I had my hair in an afro the other day for Sabbath. Had a dinner party, it was fabulous, so praise the Lord great opportunity to serve I might link a, a picture of my hair here or somewhere but yeah Rachel you're talking too much so what I'm gonna do in true Ray Talks fashion is look away from the camera lol no I'm actually gonna uh, section off my hair eh -eh. hey you see why you don't leave your hair in an afro let's talk about fornication what yes so what is fornication I'm gonna probably put a dictionary definition here boom but from what I know about fornication it's practicing premarital sexual what did I call it in French wrong con wrong con something <laughs> forgot sexual activity before avant la mariage so practicing um, sexual activities before marriage, before marriage. This can vary. One of the most popular things we think about is um, having sex with somebody, but fornication is just not limited to having sex. It's honestly any form of sexual activity. So this could be oral sex. This is TMI, this, not TMI, but it's a bit enough for me, but whatever. Fondling, I don't know. Yeah, just anything that gets somebody quite aroused masturbation and stuff like that before one is married even masturbation just say no yeah so fornication is having sexual committing any sexual act before marriage and what does the bible say about this topic well god tells us to flee so when you're fleeing from something you're not casually you know moving away from it you are using energy to run away from that thing and you might think why on earth would god tell us to flee from why is fornication a big fat no-no because god has said so but then if you start to look at things statistically and look at you know what sex is and why god created sex and what sex is supposed to do it's essentially you know procreation but it's also a means to bond a man and a woman together and it is something that is to be enjoyed within the confinements of marriage those of you who may have had 
premarital sex, but have given your life to Jesus, don't worry about it, he got you, okay? You are a new creation. I'm really trying to not to make light of this topic, but I'm just, just gotta be honest. My head doesn't even need that much entangling. I'm gonna twist this section up. Do not dwell on the fact that you may have committed some form of fornication. You are to be repentant. There is a writer, <laughs> no, there's a woman by the name of Ellen White. She was a prophet um, from God and in her book called Steps to Christ, if you want a copy of Steps to Christ, let me know. She says that true, re true repentance is a sorrow for sin and turning away, meaning that when you've committed a sin, you are genuinely like upset about it and like, rah, I don't want to ever do this again. And you turn away and the turning away is when you renounce sin and a lot of the time we try to do that in our own strength but really and truly we can't <laughs> because we need Jesus honestly like we need Jesus to help us overcome these things so why is fornication very risky so let's talk about the bonding that happens between people who are having sex you know you begin to bond with this person and you hear of stories whereby somebody is having premarital sex or committing fornication with a person. They know the person is a, is, a, is not worth their time. They know this person is not doing anything to uplift them. And they know that really and truly that this is just, it's just a ting in it. It's nothing, there's no longevity. The person is not going to marry them, but they commit fornication. And what happens is that bonds are created. Bonds are created between that those two individuals. And in some instances, if it's bonds being created by a, one individual and another one who is toxic or both are toxic, it can escalate. It doesn't always have to be the case, but it can escalate into a soul tie in that you know a person is not good for you, but you still want to take your pints off anytime you see them or they want to take their pints off when they see you. And one thing I've realized as well is that people don't talk about this, but when you're having sex with somebody, like I said, you create a bond. And I think I did have this conversation with someone, is that certain things are blurred. So, you know, some you, I've heard of couples say in the past, like, you know, we do, just, essentially they just don't talk, they just have sex. So sex is now a means of just communicating, but you're not really saying much because everybody's just taking their clothes off and want to get, be satisfied quickly and you know keep it moving which isn't that great so what happens especially if you're fornicating when you're not in a marital uh, when you're not having sex within a marital atmosphere I don't know what the word is I'm looking for a lot of things will become skewed a lot of things that you didn't really stand for you'll begin to stand for you'll make light of because you're so sexed up you know people talk about people being all drugged up when people are, uh, take drugs they're not in their right mind you can easily say the same thing with when people are having sex people are people are not always in their right mind when they're doing the deed you know they're not in their right mind and i want to talk to my ladies i was talking to one of my young people um this week actually and i just think we're talking about yeah she must have had a couple i'm not gonna say the couple's name right a couple on her WhatsApp image and was like hailing them like, oh, so cute. Then me knowing what I know, I was just like, oh, are they married? And she was like, no. And I was like, and then my young person said something to the effect of, oh, she's a bit older than the guy. If you wanna, if you wanna be a cougar, do you boo? Just, just be in holy matrimony where everybody and their choice in it. Um, so she was, my young person was like, oh, he may marry her when she turns 30, something, something, something. But, you know, they're already sexing themselves. They're already doing the deed. They're already sex stop. They're already sex stop. And the likelihood of that man marrying, I need to talk normally because this is a fairly serious topic. The likelihood of marrying that woman is going to be very, very slim. There are statistics that show if you are having premarital sex or committing fornication, that that person is probably less likely 
to marry you. And if they are to marry you, they probably ain't gonna marry you within two years, if you're lucky. Think about some people you know in your personal life who are, you know, practicing that act out of marriage and think of their age and think about whether or not they're married. This topic is quite hard hitting, but it just needs to be said. It's no judgment, thus saith the Lord. And sister, girl, you need to protect your heart. Because women nowadays, they want some of us, we want to be acting like hard body and that fire. Rossford man them. That's how we want to be acting. We don't, women need to be honest with themselves, men as well. But there is an emotional bond when you have sex with somebody. For men, there is that emotional bond, but men is more physical than emotional if that makes sense, the act of having sex. So with women, there's that emotion, there's that attachment. Men as well, they do bond because there's this, oh, there's this stupid notion that men just be having sex with everybody and they don't get emotionally attached. They do get emotionally attached. But women, like, that's the main, we are more likely to get um, emotionally attached. I need to reword that, but I hope you get what I'm saying. So then with that in mind, you know, why are we, some of us, wanting to be having sex or committing fornication with a guy that we're bonding with and the guy is not committed to you? Just because a guy, you have given a guy your body, it doesn't mean he's committed to you. I'm sorry, sis. My friend, my friends, right, they just have the best, they just find the best memes. And a friend of mine found a meme recently and it said, just because you're dating a guy for seven years, doesn't mean he's gonna marry you. My uncle was studying medicine for six years and now he's a DJ. Laughing in Arabic. But, you know, it's, for some reason we, some people delude themselves and say, oh, you know, if I stay with him, then he's gonna commit to me. And some people have the argument of why is it important? Does it even matter um, to be married? You know, again, looking at stats, I'm not even referring to the Bible because like I said, sometimes God says stuff and he's very plain and plain. And when you begin to look at statistics and life, you will now say, wow, God really, un God knows what he's saying and why we have to hold what God says as the highest standard. Like I said earlier, statistics will sh tell us that these people that are pre having premarital sex, the likelihood of that person marrying them is very slim and if they do marry them, marry them, marrying them within a certain time frame is slim. Statistically, married people tend to do better. Here comes the hate comments. But I know somebody that's married and they don't have this simple. Girl, they don't marry the wrong person or well, stuff happens. But I listen to a guy called Dave Ramsey. He's a like a financial guru. It's amazing. And he, yeah, he makes reference to that, that married men tend to do well financially and there's some other male figures who have made reference to, you know, the importance of being married and them seeing it as a benefit. So when people try to say, oh, it's, a, it's just a piece of paper. For me, sis, if you are ready to commit your body to a man, then that same man should be, should be bold enough to commit himself to you publicly for all the world to know. Just because somebody is your boyfriend, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are committed. In the eye of God, what is boyfriend? If you look at the Bible, of, if you look at the Bible, people just said, oh, hello, hello, marriage. <laughs> all this, you know, but we live in a different time, innit? But I hope what I'm saying is making sense and it's not all over the place. But in short, ladies, I'm trying to say that God speaks against fornication. And if we look at statistics and uh, in society as to why God has said that. Really and truly it's because bonds are created when you have sexual intercourse with a person and if these type of bonds want to be, if these type of bonds should be created within a maritable, marit, marital, marital, uh, within, these bonds should be created in a marriage. Because one thing I, I'm seeing in this of people living together before they are married and you know they get comfortable a good friend of mine the one that sent the meme she's Kenyan and there's this thing in Kenya called come we stay I hope I said it properly and it's literally whereby you just shack up with the person if a man really wants you make him work for you sis don't just be there 
living with him, living in sin as they call it. Because look at these men that they just, they move in, they don't come in. Look how they are. You yourself, if any of you have been in that situation or you, you're currently in that situation, you can you honestly say to yourself that your man has stepped up to the plate, that he's more available. There's just a level of complacency and I don't know, well I think I kind of do know why, you know, it's almost like why commit to you. I went as far to ask some of my male friends about a situ situations where you're living with a guy for years and he doesn't really express, you know, that he wants to marry you. And I want to advise ladies, when you want to know about men, please talk to men. Pray for God to allocate like good male figures and male friends in your life so that they can advise on this and go to the Bible and talk to God himself. <laughs> some of my male peers, right, when I asked them this, some of them had said, in some instances, the guy is not ready to be with you or it's a case whereby he is waiting for a better ideal to come along and until that person's come along, he's still gonna just be there lagging you on. He's complacent, he doesn't really see the need to commit to you. One of my male friends even went as far to say that women that do that, that they have cheapened themselves. I was like, have mercy, Lord. I was like, wow. In that, he was basically saying, like, women, we un need to understand that we are a prize. We are a prize. Like, God has put a special calling upon women's lives. We are amazing. And you need to be with a man by God's grace, by God's grace alone, because it's easy to fall into sin and fall into fornication. I'm not coming on here like I'm, you know, oh, you know, I'm so amazing and blah, 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 and stuff like that. No, but know your value. This video is a bit all over the gaff, but I hope you've taken something away from it. Please, in the comments below, let me know your thoughts. I feel like we just scratch the surface. If you want me to discuss anything in particular, send me an email. Drop me an email, sweetie, and let's have a shot. Have a good day. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with at least one friend. I'll be praying for you guys, as well as myself. God be with you till we meet again. Bye.